Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Hello and welcome to this Monday Postcast. I'm Maddie Plow, joined in the studio by Nick Watts. We also have Brendan Duke and Paul Binfield from Paddy Power on the line. We're going to be reviewing, as always, a top-class weekend of action. Let's start off with Kempton Wattsy in the Lanzarote. Big-time dancer, pretty impressive in the end, a winner for John Joe O'Neill Jr. Yeah, I, I, I liked the performance. I didn't have a bean on Big Time Dancer at all, but I, I liked the fact that at Kempton on Saturday we had winners from the Jenny Candlish Yard. And then if you go back to the first race, we had a Michael Madgwick horse uh, beating mm. a Nicky Henson horse. It kind of, it's been a lot of focus on the smaller trainers lately. And it's really nice that on a big Saturday meeting like that, that two of the smaller ones came to the fore and, and won some nice prizes. So, you know, it kind of reaffirmed my, my faith in the game that it's, you know, it, it's, um, there's all sorts of good trainers out there and they proved that on Saturday. Here, here, Brendan. Personally, I'm not sure there's many future grade one winners in that Lanzarote field, but it was an absorbing race nonetheless. What was your outtake? Um, yeah, the, I mean, the winner was impressive. I thought the nine pound rise was uh, was plenty for the for the Doncaster win. But I mean, travelled away, you call it the winner, turn him for home, found plenty and uh, very impressive. It'll, it'll have to get another nine pound rise anyway to stop it. Yeah, and we've got to give a mention to John Joe O'Neill Jr. Understandably, because of his dad, he's got sort of that big mounted to climb. Lots of expectation there. But, he, you know, he had a big winner on Palmer's Hill uh, at Cheltenham not so long ago now. And he's really, really showing his talents in the saddle. Yes, and um, he's he, he'll obviously get plenty of practice at home. And he's, he's a very well-connected young fella. So you, you would think he, he could go, and he's got skills, more importantly. So, yeah, you'd think he could go a long way. I like that. He's got skills. Uh, Binners, hello, how are we doing? And, and what was your reaction to the Lanzarote? Well, I'm very good, Maddie. Lovely to hear from you again. And the gazillions of listeners. Um, big time dancer. Re really, good, really good, isn't it? As what he said, to see a smaller stable in the limelight. Alan O'Keefe was down at Kempton representing Jenny Kenlish. It was great to see Alan again. I used to see him a lot at Cheltenham in the old days. Um, and although we didn't really have any anti-post reaction, um, I believe they're considering a big handicap at Aintree in April. So, and you'd have to think that may well suit the horse as, you know, wouldn't be a too dissimilar track to Kempton. Yeah, yeah, you'd certainly have to think that would suit. Now, top notch, he's on our screen behind us. Um, what a lovely old horse he is, Watsy. Yeah, he's fantastic, isn't he? Um, that was a really good race for what was quite a quiet Saturday. I thought that chase at Kempton was fantastic. Loads of different angles. You had Charbel as well in there, uh, coming in at the top of his game. You had Black Corton on a kind of a little bit of a retrieval mission. You had Sparadeck to set the paces. Really good, like, yeah. you know, conundrums in there. And, you know, it'd been interesting. Um, I, I imagine it was a fairly even split between Charbel fans and Top Notch fans. The race did set up nicely for Top Notch. He went a good pace. I think this is probably a bare minimum for him these days. I think he probably stays further than this now. Um, okay. And they went Opens for the long walk, the didn't they? Um, yeah, it does. And uh, he ran well in the long walk at Ascot over Christmas on his return over hurdles. Uh, he saw this out really, really well. I imagine they've got no other option but to go for the Ryanair. Now, history tells you that top notch is as doughty and as, as tough as he is normally finds one too good for him. Um, he did a couple of seasons ago when he ran well at Cheltenham at the festival. Um, he's run well there a few times, not quite got the job done. Brilliant little horse. Would I be backing him for the Ryanair? Possibly not. Mm. Brendan, great to hear uh, Daryl Jacob afterwards saying that when he retires, he's definitely coming home with me. But Ryanair, would Top Notch be in your considerations? Oh, I, de I, I definitely consider him, as, as Nick said. You see, because, I mean, lovely old horse. He seems like an old horse, doesn't he? But he's only eight because he's been around since, of course, his, his triumph hurdle escapades yeah. and what have you. So, I mean, he's, he's just a marvellous horse, but he could have another three or four seasons in him. Um, I know he's, he's plenty of miles on the clock, what have you, but uh, he's thriving. It was an interesting race. I actually marginally favoured Charbel. I mean, there's nothing between them. They're rated the same. And I just marginally favoured Charbel. But it all came down to jumping. Charbel didn't jump great for whatever reason. Top notch did. And um, he, he beat him comfortably. Yeah, I, I, I imagine in an open Ryanair, he, he would have to have a decent chance. Yeah, and Binus, how did the market react? Did you trim him from the Ryanair? 
We did indeed, Maddie. We went um, eight to one from twelve to one, which puts him in as fourth co-favourite for the Ryanair now, which is headed by Min at seven to two. And then you've got waiting patiently at, and footpad at five to one, seven to one bar. Fantastic. Now we're going to get on to Warwick, of course, in just a sec. But I was really impressed with Glenn Rocco. Um, what's he also at Kempton? Connections, they're looking more at the top of them now, but I think I was really, really taken with him. I think this horse is a force to be reckoned with wherever he goes. Strong stayer, obviously, but he, he jumps very well as well. What was your thoughts on him? Yeah, I couldn't put it better myself. He did jump fantastically. He won easily, and I think Connections see him as a Grand National horse, maybe not for this season, for mm. next season. Um, but again, it, it kind of highlights Nick Gifford's had a little renaissance this season. He's obviously got Did They Leave You Out too as kind of his beacon and he goes for the Betfair Hurdle, I think, next month at um, Newbury. But he's mm. also got horses kind of lower down the food chain that have been winning and this horse uh, that's coming through the ranks as well, um, who I think will be even better with another year on his back. And I could see him developing into a Grand National Horse of the future. So, you know, it's great. I was talking about the smaller trainers earlier with Jenny Candlish. Of course, Nick Gifford mm. was, was on there as well. So great that it was shared around so much at Kempton on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. And Brendan, perhaps the race fell apart a little bit, but I just think some horses, the way they do it is more important. And this horse, you know, you could see him there travelling really well from a long way out and he just stayed all day yes tra traveling and jumping uh, most impressive and i couldn't help noting a, a little uh, boost to the form of your beloved glenn forza or mm. also gary moore's who, who finished fourth over christmas went and won as well so i mean that looks like proper form so what do you do could because glenn forza is rated 134 so he won't get into the close brothers but he's obviously very well handicapped horse but he if he goes and they're going to have to run him before Cheltenham, Glenn Fours, aren't they? Um, because he's not going to get into anything off 134, but he, he, he looks he looks potentially well handicapped off that mark, yeah. Yeah, he does. Definitely an eye-catcher and, and Glenn Rocco boosting the form, as you say. Binners, did you shorten him for anything? No, as as you said, Maddie looks like a top and horse this year. Um, as, uh, Nick, quite right, he thinks he might well be a Grand National horse for next year. Um, it, it was a great performance. The only sad thing, well, not sad, but bad thing about the race was when Joss's Hill took a tumble, because if he hadn't done that, we might have had a great battle between Glen Rocco and Joss's Hill. But uh, it's all about jumping and fair play to Glen Rocco and Connections. Indeed, we mentioned the Grand National horse that could well go there this year is Impulsive Star, winner of the Classic Chase. What's your thought? Callum Mad had him come into the last, but he battled on really bravely on the inside and notched a first win over fences. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Callum Mad because that's two races in a row where he's looked like he's going to win, and then he lost, uh, just lost out in the Borders National last time, mm. and then similar thing again. He looked like he was coming to win. I was looking back through his history to see if he had any wind surgery or anything like that, and he has had wind surgery, but they still run him in a tongue tie. I just wonder if he needs something extra, this horse, maybe a pair of blinkers or something like that, because he does look as though he's primed to win one of these attitude big... attitude potentially is an Possibly, issue? because that, like I said, that's two two races in a row that he could have won, may possibly should have won, and he's won neither of them. So um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him, but he's kind of got the raw materials there to, to win one of these big long-distance chases. And um, Tom Seagal all season has gone about the importance of rhythm in... in, in in, fence, in chase races and mm. it, was, it was very evident again here especially at Warwick with such a quick jumping track um, I quite fancy Duel at Dawn the Alex Hales horse yeah. who never got into an early rhythm at all found himself behind and couldn't make up the ground particularly on is mm. so good and so and so decent at the moment the, the racing surface so um, impulsive star and Calic Mad were the opposite they went from fence to fence and, and you know fought out the finish and um, yeah I'm not sure I'd fancy either of them as, as Grand National winners potentially um, but Calic Mad would be on my radar I'd be particularly interested like I said if they put some kind of headgear on mm. it yeah, that's wise to mention. Um, the connection sort of, they were a bit lukewarm on Impulsive Star afterwards, uh, Brendan, but I thought he stayed on really eye-catchingly in the closing stages. Maybe that was just highlighted by the fact that Callit Mad perhaps faded away a little bit. Would you give him a chance at Aintree? Uh, well, he's, he's very tenacious because he got in close to a couple of fences laid on and you just thought maybe that might check his momentum, but he, he, he kept on finding And even when he got in close to them, he was quite nimble. He seemed to get away from the fences mm. quite quickly. So, um, yeah, he's a, he, he's a handy horse with a good attitude. Um, the Grand National... Will, 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 what, what mark is he on now? I'm not sure. He'd probably need a bit more to get into the National, would he? 
Um, maybe, I'd have maybe to, I'd he have does, to check, yeah. I'd have to check that out. But, um, yeah, he's... Uh, he, he might even go for the for the four miler. Um, of course, they they probably bump into OK Corral again. But uh, mm. if, 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 with an amateur jockey, you'd imagine they look at the four miler as well. Cheltenham. Yeah, fourth at Cheltenham last year, and um, been as you know a, a Grand National winner. Won this with one for Arthur a couple of years ago. What price impulsive star to do the same? Well, we made him thirty three from sixty six, Maddie. Um, the second Callet Mad is also on the. 33 to 1 mark. I, I think Neil Mulholland said after the race he doesn't think he'll get into the national anyway, and uh, maybe it's a year too soon anyway. I think more like, more relevantly is possibly the national hunt chase betting, where he's now 12 to 1 from 50 to 1 to go better on that fourth you just mentioned last year. And we have OK Corrales, who I'm sure we'll talk about in a second. That one's 3 to 1 favourite. Fabulous. You read my mind. Binners, OK Corral, really, really impressive. Um, beating Secret Investor Watsy. Lots of support for him beforehand. Derek O'Connor, very interestingly, was booked, which showed you they wanted to go for the four-miler, and, and he did it well. He did it really well. He did it better than I was expecting. I mean, I think you have to qualify it. The Rockies' treasure underperformed. Um, yeah. I was talking about rhythm a minute ago. He never got into a rhythm, um, which was quite slightly surprising because he has jumped well in the past. But... Um, you know, he made a few mistakes uh, and he was beaten, you know, a fair way out. Maybe just one race too many for him in a short, short space. It could be. But OK, Corral, very impressive. And you think the obvious place to go would be the four miler. That's why he brought Derek O'Connor over to get a feel of him. Um, and he'd go there with a great chance. The only thing that kind of sprung to my mind when I was watching the race that he won so well, uh, might they reappraise things and think about the RSA? Mm. Um, he didn't strike me as an out-and-out stay a horse that might want four miles. He was travelling very, very well throughout the race, almost over-travelling. And if he was to do that in a four-miler, you wonder if he might get home. Um, I'm sure it's still the favourite race on the cards, the four-miler over the RSA. But he did win very impressively and you wouldn't be out of place in the, in the novice race. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people sort of saying, well, maybe he might change his mind and go for the RSA course. The trainer's got Santini for that, who they think an awful lot of. Somebody on Twitter, um, excuse my memory is terrible, I can't remember who it was, was suggesting if he was there, as he would go for the Gold Cup. What do you make of that? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a bold shout. If he but... was yours, do you think? Keep to the novice or if he was gold. mine, he I'd... is old. He's had his problems. He's, I think, he's, is he nine? I think. If, if he if he was mine, I'd be very tempted to go for the RSA because I think he does. Okay. He he obviously gets that trip very well. Four miles would be a step into the unknown. He travels so well that I'm just worried that he might not get home. Mm. Okay, Brendan, what was your take on OK Corral? Yeah, he 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 was he was seriously impressive. OK, Rocky's treasure disappointed, but that secret investor is no mug. And he put up, he jumped quite well. He, he got a little bit warm beforehand. And as Nick said, he took a bit of a tug, but I, I, I think he's settling better over fences than he did over hurdles. So he, 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 he'd probably be okay over four miles, but you know he's going to be a huge runner over three miles. Now, I would have probably as much love for Santini as Nicky Henderson does. So perhaps he said that to McManus, and then McManus might have a graw for the race with the JT McNamara connection or what have you, and he wants to go for the four-miler. Mm. But um, in, in terms of prestige, the obvious race would be the RSA. And, I mean, it nearly, I, I think I'd have him third favourite at the moment, be behind Santini and Delta work. Um, so, so that's the race I'd go for, but there, there may be other factors at play. And as you said, it didn't bring the doctor over for nothing. So. Mm. Yeah, indeed. And another horse who perhaps might not go to Cheltenham, or maybe it won't be his D-Day, is Beakstown, who won the novice hurdle on the card. What's he? Um, again, the race sort of fell apart a bit. The favourite tidal flow never really got into a rhythm and, and wasn't really prominently positioned, but he was really impressive, Beakstown. Yeah, he was. I was kind of disappointed to see Tyler Flo run so poorly because I, you know, I'm very intrigued by this Henderson horse, Downtown Getaway, who was second to him at Newbury last time. He runs this week. We might mention really, him later on. Yeah, yeah, I think and then so. he was obviously bought for big money after winning his bumper oh, in Ireland. So, um, yeah, I was I was hoping for a good run from Tidal Flo to kind of back up that Newbury form, but he didn't perform at all. Um, Bigstown looked very impressive. I thought. Uh, I think it'd be unwise to underestimate him. Uh, he, I think he's quite a strong stay. I wouldn't be surprised if he. I don't know what they were talking about afterwards. I missed the quotes, but whether they were thinking about going to Cheltenham or not. And well, there's a Grade One three mile race at Aintree. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pitch up there. That might be a good good spot for him. But no, he's. Um, I, I think he's a good horse, and I think he'd be in better chaser. 
Yeah, chaser of the future, Brendan, for you, Beakstown. Would you be interested in, in him for the Ballymore if he were to go? Well, like Nick, I'd probably be more interested for for for, for, for the Albert Bartlett, but they're going to give uh, Cheltenham a swerve. Is that what they said, Maddie? Well, I don't think they said exactly. You know, if you know, they pro I think the quote was something along the lines: "If he proved he was mentally and physically ready, um, and it wouldn't be to his detriment to run, then they would." But yeah, so they were sort of pouring cold water on it a little bit because he's very much horse for the future. I think. Yeah, well, that's true because he did look very green up in Newcastle. Great green has probably got him beaten up there. So he he came on a lot mentally because he, he was a very he, straightforward. Dan said, sorry, I think Dan said he blamed himself for getting beat uh, the time before because he ran him too fast. That was the excuse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I mean, he looked very professional in Warwick. He travelled and jumped um, bar the last. He missed the last via the race one at that stage. Of the exact opposite to title flow, he made a mistake at the first and never went a yard afterwards. So you probably have to give him a pass, but that was very disappointing. Yeah, I, if I was to pick a race for him, I would say the Albert Bartlett because he looks such a strong stayer. Um, but it, it, it'd be interesting. Again, he, he looks a unit on the telly. It's hard to tell, but... From what you were saying, he's a he's a chasing prospect, so maybe it'd be no harm to give Chapman on this. Mm, yeah, I think he's well over seventeen hands, so he sure is a big horse. Okay. Been as any prices for for Cheltenham on Beakstown, even if he's unlikely to go, who knows? He might turn up. Yeah, we we went twelve to one first show immediately after the race, Maddie, for the Ballymore novices hurdle. Um, that market's headed by Champ at four to one. Um, he's now been pushed out to sixteen to one, and. And it, it's it's interesting what Dan Skelton said. He did only run um, at Newcastle two weeks after his win at Utoxter. So give him a month and we'll have another look. Yeah, and obviously the new one and Willoughby Court both won that race before winning the, the Neptune or the Ballymore. Um, so that's about it for the review section. We'll be back just after this. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. OK, so welcome back. It wasn't just Saturday. We had good action yesterday as well. Brendan, Felix Desji won the horses winning on the card. Who took your eye? Yes, well, Felix Desji was interesting. That was probably quite a weak renewal of the Moscow Flyer, but uh, a triumph of initiative. They changed tactics on him, and he was still a bit keen, but at least he, he seemed to relax a bit more out in front and... That, that inner track in uh, Punchestown is, is quite tight and it suited him and he just never came back. I thought perhaps more eye-catching with the future, the future was that winter escape who gave a stone yes. to Aflutar. Um, jumped really well. Has He's done really well since he's come come over here from uh, from, from Alan King and uh, probably is a lively runner in the JLT based on that run. I mean, I, I think Aflutar is a fair horse to be given a stone to. Um, so, so he's interesting. Shout out, if you'll indulge me, to my friend Brian McMahon, who I'd last seen frolicking in the Portuguese surf. So a bit different yesterday, seeing him in a freezing punches town. But he's done really well with that show, Malayak, who's, uh, who's improved about twenty pounds in four months, and is jumping. He missed the third last yesterday, but generally his jumping, which has been a bit of an issue, has improved no end. And they're going to try and step up again for the Grand National Trial back in. Punches Town in early February, so so he's interesting, very likable horse. And finally, uh, Vision Donner, you mm. won't be surprised, he costs 350,000, very striking specimen, really, really good looking horse. I don't know, again, if Cheltenham, he he, he must be close enough to 17 hands, if, if Cheltenham would be on the agenda, they might have a look at one of the novice races at the Dublin Racing Festival to see if he's ready. He kind of jumps his hurdles a little bit like a chaser. So I'd say they'd be taking their time with him, but he's a very exciting horse going forward. OK, fantastic. What's the only thing impressed you in, in Ireland over the last couple of days? Not really in Ireland. One we didn't mention before, uh, is again, going back to the Warwick card, was first assignment ran in the uh, Potemps qualifier and qualified yeah. for the final. And I thought he ran quite a nice race. Um, he was third behind uh, Paisley Park at Haydock prior to that. Notched up the secrets of wins at Cheltenham before that as well. Yeah, and he's won a couple of times at Cheltenham. I'm sure the final will be on his agenda. I, I, I love Ian Williams' horses. I think Ian Williams is a fantastic trainer. And he'd be first on my list for that uh, first assignment. I think really eye-catching trial there. OK, nice to get that in there. Binners, finally, any sort of reaction to the Irish action? Any horses short and Felix Desjie, Vision Donner and uh, a whole host of others winning? Yeah, Felix Desjie, um for the Supreme. Maddie halved in price. 
20 from 40. The um, front running tactics seem to work the oracle there. Um, we, we might see him again at Leopardstown for the Dublin Racing Festival weekend, and we may have to make further amendments if he can do it again. One very interesting horse was Winter Escape, who won the won the uh, novices chase yesterday. Um, that one, we went 20 to one first show for for the JLT novices chase immediately afterwards. We were 16 to one before we, we began this postcast, and he's now gone down to 12 to one. So um, there's been a few quid around for him, or we've reassessed the market. But Winter Escape now 12 to one. Yeah, done very little wrong. Rare you see a horse come back like that, Watsy, from, you know, sort of losing hope with Alan King going over to Ireland. He's really thrived. Um, let's move on to then some of the racing this weekend. I'll just take you through some of the races. Obviously, the main one is the Clarence House. We'll talk about that in some more detail. But we've got the Mayor's Hurdle uh, registered as the Warfield, won by La Bagawa last year. Vroom Vroom Mag also won it in the past. So could well see some really nice types in that. We've got the Skybet Supreme Trial Rossington Main Novices Hurdle at Haydock, won by Neon Wolf a couple of years ago. Often a really good guide. Uh, we have the Holloway's Handicap Hurdle at Ascot Grade 3. We've got the first running of the Champion Hurdle Trial at Haydock, named after the new one who won it so many times. That's bound to be a good, a good watch. And also one for Arthur could run in the Peter Marsh Chase again at Haydock. He fluffed his lines when unseating at Aintree last time, but it'd be great to see him back. But uh, we know now there's going to be four runners, or at least likely to be at this stage, four runners in the Clarence House at Ascot on Saturday. Uh, Underso in there, Diego de Charmille, Fox Norton reappearing, and of course, Altior. Binus, let's go over to you first. Have you got any prices? Yes, we have, Maddie. Um, we go 4 to 1 on, four to one on Altior, 11 to 2 Underso to turn the sand down form around, 9 to 1 Fox Norton. And Diego to, to Charmil, the outsider at 25 to 1, who on ratings looks like he has it all to do with Altior. Mm. Um, Brendan, you've certainly got a, a bit of a theory that you don't think Under So is going to run. It's been unseasonably uh, dry, of course, which wouldn't suit him. Yeah, and there's only two mils of rain between now and Saturday, so basically negligible amount of rain. I just. Uh, you also have to factor in that Willie Mullins' uh, stable is under a bit of a cloud at the moment. Certainly, if you look at the, the, the record of uh, losing favourites recently, he's having a shocking time. Um, so they'd have that in their minds anyway. And he couldn't beat him on deep ground and sand down. So are they really going to send him over to run him on what almost certainly be good ground at Ascot? I'd be surprised if he turns up um, the other two hopefully will 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 because you, you don't want to see a match or something like that but um i, I i'd be surprised if i was if i was a betting man I'd, I'd i'd take a bit of twos on that we don't see the uds on saturday that's a shame i mean that we know they're not his conditions what's he but he's a fabulous horse won it last year of course alty although didn't run in the king george to the annoyance of a lot of people but was still impressive at kempton over christmas can anything beat him here no, I wouldn't have said so. Uh, it'd just be good to see his winning streak going on. I think he's almost, he's nearly up to big bucks, isn't he? I think um, he's not, I think he's only a couple behind him at the moment sure. mm. in terms of a winning streak. Um, he actually hasn't run at Ascot for a long time. I was looking at his record earlier. I think he won a novice hurdle there back, uh, you know, three or four years ago. And I, I don't think he's been back there, certainly over fences. So it'd be good to, good to get him out and see a superstar in action. In terms of betting, it's going to be quite... Uh, you know, there's not going to be a lot going on. I, I think it'll just be business as usual. The one horse I'm interested in seeing, because we haven't seen him for ages, is Fox Norton. Um, yeah. You know, good you horse on his day. Really good sort horse. Of Duvan and yeah, like when that. he went to Colin Tizards, he had a fantastic time of it. He only just failed to win the champion chase uh, against Special Tiara, but then went to Ireland and won. They had a little nibble at the King George, didn't they? They had to go and. I suppose that's a warning sign for Altior then. You know, they Fox Norton, you know, a very good two-mile horse, uh, stays two and a half, but didn't get the three at uh, Kempton, so it doesn't always work out. Uh, I'm perfectly happy to see Altior just keep winning over two miles. It doesn't really bother me. Uh, I don't know why people are so obsessed with wanting him to go over three. He's very good at what he does over two. Mm. Yeah, Fox Norton, he goes into a similar black bracket as Politolog, doesn't he? Really good two-miler, but perhaps just doesn't stay that three miles. Um, be good to see him back. Uh, Brendan Altior, do you think he should go up in trip? What do you think is going to happen um, on Saturday? Do you think he could be vulnerable in any possible way? 
Um, no, no, I, I, I don't think so. Um, his jumping, uh, his jumping is normally uh, rock solid. For some reason, he didn't jump brilliant in um, the Tingle Creek, but his jumping was back to normal in uh, Campton. And um, yeah, I, 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 the Fox, Fox Norton is a good horse, but he's not as good as Altior, and he probably won't be at his best on Saturday either, given the, given the layoff. So. Um, I mean, the fours on will tell you all you need to know. I don't, yeah. I, I don't think he'd be get, I don't think he'd be getting beaten though. No. Yeah, and it's been great to see him, you know, relatively out so much this season. Altior usually would have gone to that that game spirit that's been used as a stepping stone the last couple of years, but it'd be fantastic to see him have a pipe opener for Cheltenham. We'll move on. Uh, any other fancies this weekend on Saturday? We've got action at Kempton, Weatherby, Warwick, Lingfield, Fairy House on Newcastle Sunday, Southall, Kelso, and Punchestown. I'll go over to you, Brennan, first. Anything you've got your eye on? Um, no, unfortunately, the uh, the decks have just come, or the entry, should I say, have just come in while I was doing the uh, while, while I was doing the show. So I haven't had a chance to have a proper look. Sorry about that, Manny. No worries. Uh, we'll take a quick break now and get your midweek nap. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer thirty days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer ten questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. So welcome back to this Monday postcast. It's time to discuss the midweek racing now. I'll just run you through the cards. So um, obviously today we have Punchestown, Fontwell, Fosslass, Wolverhampton. Tuesday is Lingfield, Ferryhouse, Newcastle, Kempton. Wednesday, Newbury, always a good card at Newbury, full of good novice hurdlers. Uh, Lingfield, Plumpton, Kempton. Thursday is Market Raisin, Ludlow, Wincanton and Newcastle. Uh, worth mentioning, uh, Market Raisin stage, a listed bumper on Thursday. And Friday, it's Lingfield, Chepstow, Musselburgh and Kempton. Have we had a look at the midweek meetings at Watsy? Do we have any fancies? Yeah, I've got one at Newcastle uh, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. It's an old favourite of mine I've talked to you about before, Tim Vaughan's DBC. Um, oh, is he back? Is he finally? He's back, yeah. You, you know, he goes missing this horse for, for long periods and you're thinking, oh, I hope he hasn't had another injury because he is a really promising horse. He was placed in a grade one at entry over hurdles a few seasons ago. Uh, missed most of last season. He's half-brother to Don Poli, of course, so he's, he's very well-bred. Got off to a good start uh, chasing, finished second at Chepstow. I think behind the horse of Colin Tizar's drinks interval, it's quite early in the season. Yep. And I was thinking, well, that's great, you know, build on that and, and, you know, make yourself into a good chaser. But then, of course, he went on the missing list, so I'm thinking, oh, he's gone wrong again. But he's in the entries. He's running at Newcastle tomorrow. He's in against quite a good horse of, called Jamming Masters, who didn't jump very well last time, but still overcame that and ran a good race. So it won't be easy for him. But, you know, I was still keeping the faith that he could turn out to be a decent chaser. So DBC, Tim Vaughan at Newcastle tomorrow. Excellent. And long, long term, where do you see him ending up? He looks quite slow. I mean, it, if things were to go right, it's not impossible that he could end up in the four miler at Cheltenham. If things didn't go right, then he'd just be knocking around in novice chases for a little while. But yeah, hopefully he can take a good step forward tomorrow. Yeah, Brendan, I mentioned that Newbury card being a good one. St. Calvados appeared on that card uh, last year. Who have you you've got your eye on this week? Well, I have a nap in, 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 on that Newbury card. Actually, you're right. It is very interesting. But Save that then for the, for the music. I would say that for the music. Just before this, there's a horse running tomorrow in the first of Barry House, a beginner's chase called At Your Ease. Now, he's a bit of a boy, this fella, but he's by Scorpion, so he didn't lick it off a stone. But he, he settled better in, um, in in a hurdle race uh, in Nace the last day. They look to be getting getting a hold and done a reasonable job of him, and he could be the biggest horse in train, and he is massive. So you would think that fences should be the making of him. He's found a very winnable beginner's chase tomorrow in Fairy House. I, I'd expect him to, to deliver. Fabulous. And Binners, over to you. Any fancies this week? Yeah, I've got one on the all-weather at Kempton for Tuesday, uh, Maddie, at 6.15. It's a unit of assessment for William Knight, um, Ed Dunlop's former assistant who relocated to Darkest Sussex. This one's been knocking on the door. And I think the step up to a mile and a half could just work the oracle. Adam Kirby takes the ride and he gets on very well indeed with the horse. Brilliant. Then let's just clarify those midweek naps. This will not be beaten. It's got to be DBC, hasn't it, Watson? It's got to be, yeah. <laughs> not going anywhere else. <laughs> Brendan? Uh, 215 Newbury, the Russian Doyen. It was a horse I was looking forward to going, going over fences. Um, he... he Unfortunately, he, was fa he, he looked good at Exeter on his comeback, beating that I'm a game changer. So, I mean, that looks really good for him in the light of what he's done since. Went to Cheltenham. He made a mistake at the first, and 
I, I assume it just knocked his confidence because he was never going a yard after that. So you give him a, a pass for Cheltenham. The boy cobbed him back in the plate tomorrow to instill him with the confidence he needs. I expect him to make class tell the Russian doyen. Confidence there. Uh, Binners, finally over to you. Yeah, I'm going to go for another one on the all-weather. This time at Lingfield on Wednesday, the 150. A horse called Paradise Boy for Andrew Balding. Um, he ran a bit green on his race course bow at Chelmsford last month. He still managed to fin- finish third, beating just over two lengths at a huge price. He won't be that big again this time, but I think the tr- step up in trip to a mile and a half should suit this horse much better. OK, brilliant. That's all we've got time for today. All looking ahead Saturday and out of your, of course. Dave Orton's going to be back on Friday to do the tipping postcast. He'll cover the cards in more detail then with the team. As always, if you enjoy these shows, please make sure you rate, subscribe and review wherever you're listening to us from. The Golf Postcast is on Tuesday with Bruce Millions and Steve Palmer and Ian McLaughlin. And Tuesday, uh, we're kicking off our anti-post postcast tomorrow, so be sure to tune in for that. And our Thursday football postcasts are also there with the team looking at the weekend's Premier League games. We'll see you soon. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com.